Hello, welcome to Gestational Diabetes. This video was developed by the Maternal and Child Health Division here at the city of Brownsville. We hope you enjoy it. Our first unit is Understanding Gestational Diabetes. Let's begin. What is gestational diabetes? It's a type of diabetes that develops during pregnancy in women who don't already have diabetes. What is diabetes? Diabetes is a chronic health condition that affects how your body turns food into energy. How does diabetes work? The following is a brief summary of diabetes physiology. Most of the food you eat is broken down into sugar, also called glucose, and is released into your bloodstream. When your blood sugar goes up, it signals your pancreas to release insulin. Insulin acts like a key to letting the blood sugar into your body's cell for energy use. If you have diabetes, your body either doesn't make enough insulin or can't use the insulin it makes as well as it should. When there isn't enough insulin or cells stop responding to insulin, too much blood sugar stays in your bloodstream. This creates a great diversity of health issues. Let's watch the following video of Diabetes Overview. Hi, I'm Joan London. Diabetes is affecting more and more of us every day. Family members, friends, maybe even you. More than 30 million Americans are living with diabetes and about one in four of them don't even know it yet. In fact, many of us don't even fully understand what diabetes is or how to know if we're at risk. So to help us, I am joined by Dr. Ann Albright, director of the CDC's Division of Diabetes Translation. Hi, Ann. Hi, Joan. What's the basic definition of diabetes? Well, there are two major forms of diabetes. Type 1 is a disease in which the body no longer is able to make enough insulin. And those who have type 1 diabetes must take insulin to survive. In type 2 diabetes, it's a disease in which the insulin is not acting properly. People are not sensitive enough to their insulin, and so they may be on insulin, they may also be treated with uh, pills, and they may certainly and must uh, eat healthy and be active. It's a key component of treating type 2 diabetes. How do you know if you even have it? If you are urinating a lot, if you are losing a rapid amount of weight, if you are getting some infections that don't heal. The, the issue is not everybody experiences those symptoms and those who do may not necessarily think it's something that they have to get checked out or that they certainly think are, are related to diabetes. And what are the risk factors? That is something you really should be paying attention to for type 2 diabetes. The risk factors are if you're over the age of 45, if you are not as physically active, you're not getting enough physical activity, if you're overweight or obese, and if you're a member of a high-risk ethnic group, African American, Hispanic Latino, American Indian, Asian Pacific Islander, if you're a woman that had gestational diabetes or a baby weighing more than nine pounds, all of those things are risk factors. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jen. And for more information, you can log on to cdc.gov slash diabetes TV. We'll see you next time. I'm Joan London. Sponsored by NACDD with support from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Visit cdc.gov slash diabetes TV. There are three main types of diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is thought to be caused by an autoimmune reaction. This means that the body attacks itself by mistake. This stops your body from making insulin. 5 to 10% of all diabetes cases are from type 1 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes, our body doesn't use insulin well and can keep blood sugar at normal levels. 90 to 95% of all diabetes are from type 2 diabetes. And our last one is gestational diabetes. It's developed in pregnant women who have never had diabetes before. 
if you have gestational diabetes, your baby could be at high risk for health problems. Gestational diabetes frequency. Approximately 2-10% to of all pregnancies in the United States are affected by gestational diabetes. In other words, 2 to 10 mothers out of every 100 in the country will develop gestational diabetes. Managing gestational diabetes will help you have a healthy pregnancy and a healthy baby. What causes gestational diabetes? Here we can see how food turns into energy. First, food ingestion. Then, food proceeds to be processed in the stomach and intestines to be turned into glucose. Then glucose enters the bloodstream to be delivered to all your cells. Your pancreas releases insulin when it detects the glucose. Insulin binds to your glucose and helps it enter your cells. And glucose is turned into energy inside your cells. What happens with gestational diabetes is that when your body can make enough insulin during your pregnancy, it creates the first type of problem. The second type of problem is that during pregnancy, your body makes more hormones and goes through other changes, such as weight gain. These changes causes your body's cells to use insulin less effectively, a condition called insulin resistance. Insulin resistance increases your body's needs for insulin. All pregnant women have some insulin resistance during late pregnancy. However, some women have insulin resistance problems even before they get pregnant. They start pregnancy with an increased need for insulin and are more likely to have gestational diabetes. Symptoms and risk factors Symptoms Gestational diabetes typically doesn't have any symptoms, but some patients report dehydration and dry mouth, and extreme fatigue. In order to detect it, your medical history and whether you have any risk factors may suggest to your doctor that you could have gestational diabetes, but you will need to be tested to know for sure. The following are the risk factors. Family history of diabetes, age, weight, passive lifestyle. If you pertain to some of the following races that are in a higher risk for diabetes, African American, Hispanic or Latino, African Indian, Alaskan Native, and some Pacific Islander and Asian American. The following are the gestational diabetes consequences. For the mother, risk of developing high blood pressure, Increase the possibility of giving birth to a large baby that requires a cesarean section and develop type 2 diabetes. 50% of mothers with gestational diabetes develop type 2 diabetes after birth. The consequences for the newborn are the following. Being a very large, 9 pounds or more, which can make delivery more difficult. Being born early, which can cause breathing and other type of problems. Having low blood sugar and in the future developing type 2 diabetes. The consequences of type 2 diabetes are very serious long-lasting health problems, such as heart disease, vision loss, kidney disease, healing problems, nerve damage, and others. Our next unit is how to detect and prevent gestational diabetes. Detecting gestational diabetes. It is important to get tested for gestational diabetes so you can begin treatment as soon as possible. Gestational diabetes usually develops around the 24th week of pregnancy, so you should be tested between 24 and 28 weeks of your pregnancy. If you're at higher risk for gestational diabetes, your doctor may test you earlier. Blood sugar that is higher than normal early in your pregnancy may indicate that you have type 1 or type 2 diabetes rather than gestational diabetes. The following are some tips to help you controlling gestational diabetes. 
attend to your prenatal appointments accordingly. Check your blood sugar levels. Eating healthy food in the right amounts at the right times. Be active physically and monitoring your baby. And we are going to conclude this presentation with the preventive side. Before pregnancy, what can you do to prevent gestational diabetes? First, lose weight if you are overweight or obese. Do regular physical activity and eat a well-balanced diet. If you are already pregnant, don't try to lose weight. You may need to slowly gain weight for your baby to be healthy. Talk to your doctor about weight gain and physical activity. And lastly, eat a well-balanced diet. This concludes our presentation. Thank you. Follow us on Facebook and if you have any questions, do not hesitate to contact luis.salazar at brownsvilletx.gov or the Public Health Department. See you in our next video.